Hello, I'm Hannah, and this is Hannah's Books. This week, I've spent more of my time away from the news on Twitter and away from the still-growing worldometer coronavirus statistics, too. Instead, I've spent a bit of time sitting outside, enjoying what feels like the beginning of summer here in the Washington, D.C. area. My family lives immediately outside of D.C. proper, but inside the Beltway, as the pundits say. In fact, we're within an easy walk of the D.C. line, and our neighborhood is pretty urban, although my street is full of small little yards front and back. Perhaps because of the reduced traffic in the area due to so many people staying home during the pandemic, wildlife seems to have been a little less shy lately. Let me show you just a little of what I've been seeing right next to our house. First, a story. A year or two ago in the spring, when we had just opened all our windows, I woke up in the middle of the night to hear the sound of screaming monkeys. The next morning, our neighborhood listserv was full of people trying to figure out what on earth had been going on. Finally, someone pointed out that the sounds were coming from barred owls, who had apparently just moved in. Nope, not that kind of barred owls. Barred owls. Lately, a new pair of barred owls have been spending some time in our tiny backyard, quite close to the back door, which opens onto a small deck. I was pretty amazed to see these big, beautiful birds looking so comfortable hanging out near a quartet of humans. But that visitation didn't surprise me as much as what I found when I opened our front door and stepped out to our front stoop. Within maybe five or six feet of our door, and three feet from my favorite plastic Adirondack chair, and maybe 18 inches above our outdoor recycling bucket, was a bird's nest. I'd seen it for a while, but there was never anything in it when I looked. But this time, there were two tiny little baby robins, along with a vivid blue egg. I sat down and pointed my camera at the birds, and within a few seconds, two tiny heads popped up, begging for food from parents I couldn't spot. Soon, one flew in with a worm in its beak. And then the other robin joined, and the two of them fed their babies. The next morning, the egg was still there, but had a tiny hole at the top. And by lunch, there were three babies. Amazing. I've been enjoying the wildlife in our yard, even this rabbit, one of a family I know is going to eat all the vegetables in our front yard garden. I've been watching the wildlife far more than I've been watching booktube videos this week, I'm afraid, and it's been quite therapeutic, honestly. I have a whole list of videos with interesting titles saved to my Watch Later folder, and I hope I can do a little of that today. Interestingly, every time I do watch a video, I seem to wind up with new books I've committed to read. Let me mention a few of the things I'm reading now, as well as what I've committed to read. First, I jumped into reading this month's book for Toni Morrison 2020, where a bunch of us are reading all of Morrison's novels in chronological order, one per month during the year. This month's book for me is Beloved, a book which has meant a great deal to me in past readings, but which I haven't read in at least a decade. I'm loving it yet again, and we'll make a full video on the book soon. For Pride Month, I read a new book by Jen Shapland that's a cross between a memoir and a biography of white Southern writer Carson McCullers. I'll talk about it much more fully soon. Years ago, I taught McCullers' short novel, The Member of the Wedding, a couple of times, and I'd love to look through it again. And I just downloaded her The Heart is a Lonely Hunter from my library. It's another book I haven't read in a very long time. I promise to talk about all of them soon, perhaps next week in our recent reads video. 
In addition to these books, I'm reading a really fantastic study of a group of mid-20th century female artists and thinkers. More about it coming soon. Although I'm really pulled in by the Morrison reread right now, I have to admit that nonfiction has worked significantly better for me ever since early March, when my reading started getting a bit derailed by world news of both the COVID pandemic and then the Black Lives Matter movement. I have a lot of nonfiction on my Lifetime TBR, as well as new ones added all the time, and I'm thrilled to be getting through some of the books. Still, when I watch booktube videos, I seem to keep committing myself to read novels with groups of other readers. First, today starts the week-long group read of Dodie Smith's I Capture the Castle, a funny and sweet novel written about mid-20th century Britain, with a narrator who reads voraciously and is learning how to be a writer. I'll link below to the host of the read-along, which comes complete with a bingo card reflecting some of the events and themes and other associated ideas from the novel. Reading outdoors, baking a cake, having afternoon tea, and perhaps watching some of the live stream of the summer solstice celebration at Stonehenge. Next, this coming Tuesday, is Bloomsday. June the 16th is the day when Ulysses, the modernist novel by James Joyce with its character Leopold Bloom, takes place. While Bloom's Day is named after that book and timed for its date, June the 16th is a great day to celebrate all the works of James Joyce. I think my whole household may join in the fun, along with the very challenging young men at Codex Cantina, Bits of Lit, and Everyone Who Reads It Must Converse. Their challenge is to read a portrait of the artist as a young man together. Links below. Check out their very funny videos introducing the real um. The next big event on my calendar is Blackathon on Juneteenth, June 19th, celebrating the emancipation of enslaved people in the United States, technically marking the day when emancipation was finally announced in the then somewhat remote state of Texas. Following the lead of Lauren at the novel Lush and Jesse at Bowties and Books, as well as the other host, I'll be reading Black Queer Reads. I haven't decided if I'll pick up Alice Walker's The Color Purple or James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room, neither of which I've read in more than 25 years, but both of which were transformative reads for me back then. Incidentally, I first picked up Giovanni's Room when I lived in Philadelphia in the early 1990s. Back then, I used to visit a bookstore in town, the oldest gay bookstore in America, founded in the early 1970s, which was named for James Baldwin's book. Well, that brings us to my July read-alongs. First is the great news that coming up again in July will be one of my very favorite booktube events, Jane Austen July, hosted by Katie at Books and Things and Marissa at Blatantly Bookish. I'm committing to read Pride and Prejudice, one of the read-alongs the hosts have scheduled. Pride and Prejudice has been a favorite of mine since I first started reading adult fiction, and I've read it many times, but it's been a few years. I'm still putting together my whole list of answers to the prompts, and I hope to put together my official Jane Austen July TBR in the next couple of weeks. In addition to reading books by and about or inspired by Jane Austen, I'm looking forward to watching some of the events of the big North American Jane Austen celebration held online this year and therefore accessible to a lot of us who have never been able to attend the convention before. I'll provide a link down below. Finally, there is the damage that Steve Donahue always does to both my reading plans and my book buying budget. I picked up a copy of The Penguin Peeps after hearing Steve talk rhapsodically about it. I've only read sections of the diary, and it's been years since I've read those sections, although I found myself talking about Peeps' diary at least twice in recent months. After I bought a copy of The Peeps, Steve started talking about Boswell, his assorted diaries, but also his massive book, The Life of Samuel Johnson. Okay, I've never read Johnson or Boswell, 
and as usual, Steve made me realize I had to get started at some point. Matthew at Mayberry Book Club seems to have been having some of the same problems I'm having, and he came up with the idea of having a read-along in July, and he convinced Steve to join in and help us all through it. I can't imagine a better way to read this book, so I'm joining in, although I'm making no promises to how careful or complete my reading will be of this book. A book which has, as Steve says, more than 800 million pages. Wish me luck. Or maybe laugh at me. In addition to a month that I want to fill with Jane Austen, and which I've been tempted into spending on Boswell, as well as... Boswell as well as. I also, of course, plan to read my July book for Toni Morrison 2020, Jazz. And I agreed to a buddy read of Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man, a book I've never read, but which both my college-age son and my spouse count as one of their most powerful reads of the last few years. Well, I've bitten off a little more than I can chew, but that's nothing new. So now may be the time for me to take a book out to the chair on our front stoop and spend a little time reading and watching the baby robins. Take care of yourselves, and thanks for joining me today here on Hannah's Books. See you soon.